the American brothers are in town. They've come over and they're here in Rome in this lovely cloistered setting to launch the European and world side of the Christian Brothers and Investment Service. So this is about their funds going global. I'm sure their intentions to invest ethically are utterly sound, but I found myself sitting next to a row of nuns wondering how the biggest Catholic investment fund had tens of millions in companies which profit from something that everyone here would see as a sin. For over 25 years, Christian Brothers Investment Services in the United States has helped Catholic institutions, religious congregations and dioceses with responsible investing. After the conference, I got the chance to sit down with Brother Louis de Tomasis, a CBIS founding father who hopefully could enlighten me. Given the Catholic Church's very clear stance on pornography, what's your practical approach to investing in companies which, which might be linked to porn? It, it would be very simple, actually. If there were a company that was exclusively or near exclusively involved in pornography, quite simply, we say, you know, that's on the no list. Forget about it. We, we, we don't want to invest in that at all. However, if there were an entertainment company that was pretty good in all aspects, but we see there was an introduction now of uh, pornography or an introduction of inappropriate direction going. Here is the effectiveness of what CBIS is saying. Through active ownership, what we should be able to do is, so to speak, lobby that corporation and say, don't go there. Don't go that direction. We could be a force for good. Is there a kind of ballpark percent that you have where if a company's involvement with porn is above a certain percentage, then you won't invest in it? Yeah, I wish I could have that. I wish I could uh, give a percentage or some sort of a formula. Like anything that is involved in the area of values, we're talking about something that takes judgment, that takes thinking about, that takes prudential action. Across your funds, you have approximately $26 million invested with Google. Google, through their sponsored advertising links, make significant and sizable money directly from the porn industry. It's estimated by some analysts that they're making several hundred million dollars a year from the sponsored links taking people through to porn websites. You've got 26 million dollars of stock with them. We could simply say, let's get out of it. And then you wouldn't have the ability to ask me that question. But I'm sorry, we're not going to do that. Because we're much more interested, not in you, picking this up and saying, ah, I think I got gotcha. you. No, no. But what we're saying is much more difficult. We're saying we are prudentially judging that situation, we are studying it, and we are looking for a way that we can effectively stop it. You have investments in a, ver a variety of companies that all make some money from pornography, and your argument is that you can hold stock in those companies to use it as a force for good to change them. If that's the case, why in the last seven years haven't you tabled one shareholder resolution to change any of these companies? Because, first of all, any of these companies, again, are not using pornography as their major source of business. What we're trying to do is find an effective means, an effective way to get them to stop doing that. I understand why something like Google might be a more, or Yahoo might be a more contemporary subject and, and you're working on that now, but you know, hotels we know about, but for seven years there's been nothing. Uh, cable TV we know about, for well, seven years there's, there's been nothing. Well, I don't think this is, going, is, this is getting anywhere and not productive because I think it's, uh, let, let your viewers decide what you're up to and let them decide what I'm up to. And I'm at peace with that. After we recorded this interview, CBIS sent us a further statement saying that 
If we were to accept Mr Strobar's premise, then no faithful Catholic would buy magazines or watch television, subscribe to cable or satellite television services, or stay at the majority of hotels, because the vast majority of these are also responsible for distributing content that is offensive to Catholics. They added that, by his own reasoning, it is questionable whether Mr Strobar should even have appeared in our documentary, because the BBC has certainly presented programmes that could be offensive to faithful Catholics. When porn is something even the Catholic Church finds itself stumbling into, you realise just how pervasive its tentacles are. Yet not one of the household companies making a fortune from pornography had been willing to talk, let alone reveal the extent of their profits. So I went to see Richard Murphy, the forensic accountant, to see if he could tell me what countless corporate press officers had refused to. You've been crunching the figures for, for some time now. Yeah. Have you, I mean, do we have any, any definitive figures for how much companies are making? No, none at all. That's the astonishing thing about looking at this issue. We have no idea how much money companies are making out of pornography. They simply don't talk about it in their accounts. And that's amazing. Because, quite clearly, this is a large industry. And quite clearly, large companies are involved in it. But when you look at their accounts, they don't own up to that fact. We brought you on as a, as a sort of leading forensic accountant and you've come back and, you, and you, you've got us no figures. What, what, is it that's, <laughs> what is it that explains why you haven't come up with the figures? What's, what's blocked you? Well, you could say you've wasted your money, although actually we've been through an interesting exercise because the answer is we can't get the information. What blocks it? There are two things that block it. One is the accounting industry, which is not asking for enough information on important issues so that shareholders can really understand the companies in which they've invested. And the second thing we're coming up against is, of course, directors not wanting to own up to involvement in this sector. You know, we've looked at companies. We've proven that they are making money out of distributing pornography. There's not a shadow of a doubt. We can go to their websites and we can find pornographic products for sale on there. We can see that they are of significant value in terms of the product offering. And yet there is no mention in their accounts. And I am very surprised by that. It may well be heading to the mainstream, but pornography is a deeply awkward bedfellow for those household name companies who are doing rather nicely from it. They're cashing in at a time just as the industry has never been so extreme, so pervasive, and having such an impact on lives and families around the world. In the end, not one of the companies would come on camera to talk about their porn profits. A dirty secret, indeed. Two shows into the new series, and there's a double dose of egg on the face. Shooting stars on BBC Two, next.